roughness, shall we call it, and the tech sell-off happening right here, right now. What does it mean in public markets? What does that spillover effect to the private markets? I want to bring in Race Capital Partner, Edith Young, for more on this. Of course, early stage Silicon Valley venture capital funds, so not unaware of what's happening in the public markets and the, and the race to enter those public markets. What do you make of, currently, let's talk stocks first, how much are we seeing this ripple effect affecting valuations in the private markets and people's desire to build right here, right now? Yeah, I think as you know, Caroline, as an investor that really focused on early stage infrastructure software, the market is brutal and it certainly will impact a lot of devaluation in the private market. Um, but having said that, I think that particular in the world of Web3 and Web2, infrastructure software, just there's still so much more to be built. Um, like for us, particular folk at the early stage, I think valuation is not p- particular impact us yet. But at the same time, I'm still really, really bullish on some of the companies that we invested in. Still, you know, Solana, obviously a little bit more on the crypto side. FTX is a little bit, you know, still private. I'm so bullish on what they're building. But early stage is still missing a lot of building block. Mm. So I'm excited about Bundler, which is sort of storage for Web3, Notify, which is like communication of Web3. There's still so much more to be built, but we need to just hang tight um, and not get too scared with what's going on. Okay, let's talk about the crypto market because you mentioned two companies very exposed, basing themselves on Web3 and the future thereof. When you see the biggest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin getting hammered so much, when you see the spillover effects of, of VC money that's been placed into these sorts of businesses and, th- and now a pullback and perhaps that sort of risk uh, tolerance, does that mean that people are going to be worrying about the rest of the crypto space? How, how does a spillover effect happen? Well, I, I think crypto and, and the Web3 space is not purely just about Bitcoin prices or token prices. It's really about the technology side of things. In my head, you know, in many in many cases, Solana is basically building the, the AWS and the Web3 infrastructure. And not that long that there's still backup recovery, communication storage is still not there yet. I think if we look at you no know, crypto market, if you purely just look at exchanges, obviously it's a little bit crazy. But you know, three years ago, or even five years ago, when I first got into it, Bitcoin prices were three thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and to, today it's still ten x. Um, and you know, three, three, four years ago, combined market cap about four hundred billion, but today it's still over, I think, one point three, one point five trillion. So in that sense, overall market is not going away, but you know, we definitely will see some ripple effect on what's going on. But yeah. I'm so super bullish because there's so, so much more things and the fundamental for the technology, which is not about crazy trading. It's about founders often. And I think, of, of course, when you mention Solana, when you mention FTX, I think of Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF have been on a podcast of Bloomberg's recently, Odd Lots, yeah. by my old colleague, Joe Weisenthal. And a healthy dose of cynicism coming from SBF when it came to, well, what's happening in terms of VC money, in terms of far- yield farming, in terms of, you know, what's been built in terms of, in terms of, I don't know, the lunars of this world. Do you think this is a healthy sort of rebalancing in the market that will stop seeing just money, these sort of momentum trades that are happening within crypto? Yeah, Carolina, when I spoke with Emily in de- December about what's going to happen in 2022, I predicted that you know, crypto prices usually dropped in the beginning of the year, and they certainly half. And, you know, I think for us it, with SBF, and I'm really, really thankful they got to invest in FTX pretty much early on in 2019. I think like the key thing is really about, you know, making sure that we do, we don't do crazy things. I mm-hmm. think, you know, investors is no longer just about investing, it's really about helping our founders to build, to make sure that we're compliant, to make sure that, you know, operating wise, you know, we are here to help them. And yeah. we, for many, many, um, as you just talked about, uh, Ravian and with the lockup, a lot of the investor just sell off right after the six months lockup. For many, many of our companies, like for Solana, I've been holding since 2018, I still will hold. It's all about being long-term and not being a short-term investor. I, 
I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not a hedge fund. I'm not here to trade and make short term money. It's yeah. really about like long term holding, supporting the ecosystem. Uh, the ecosystem needs to be supported with regulation as well. And of course, FTX front and center with a proposal that's going through at the moment in terms of, you know, the future of options or derivatives and, and intermediation within that. How, I spoke to the new chairman of this ACFTC a little bit earlier. And how do you feel regulation is getting to grips with this new ecosystem? I think, I think, you know, coming from the White House for, for a few, I think two, about two, three months ago, having the executive order to basically indicate that they, you know, uh, President Biden really wanted to support, you know, regulate is a good sign uh, for the ecosystem long term. And particularly with FTX, the FTT token is not available for U.S. market. I think you know, they make a really, really conscious choice to move headquarters to the Bahamas, uh, which I went two weeks ago uh, with the FTS conference, which is amazingly successful. And having a very, very clear line being drawn, what's being offered to the U.S. customers versus the rest of the world is very, very different. In addition to FTX, you know, Coinbase, which already gone public, is making a huge effort to make sure that we all regulate KYC, AML, you know, compliance. This is a really, really good thing for the crypto market long term. And we at Race Capital are here to support all these initiatives. Edith, it's always great catching up with you. Race Capital Thanks. partner, Edith Young. Stay well. Thank you very much indeed. Meanwhile